Yes. Well, um, yeah, we were talking in the gym the other day, King Mo and Dia Davis, um, and they were talking about they had heard that Floyd had been in the gym busting his sparring partners up already. Oh, believe Already. It. So I'm just like, so to me, I was like, you know what? It, to me, I think the timing actually is kind of bad for, for Connor. You oh, know, man. if I was Connor, I would want to try to drag this thing Who out. Who is Connor going to gonna bring in? I know. Like, who's he going to bring in to get prepared for in two months? Who? To help get prepared in two months. Like, like name me the person. I want to see this person. I, bring him to me. Because I'm going to tell you one thing. It's a kid named DeAndre Lattimore. They call him Bull Lattimore from St. Louis. Mm-hmm. was a prospect, and he was on the rise, right? And mm-hmm. he got this opportunity to go spar with Floyd Mayweather, the great Floyd Mayweather in Las Vegas, move his training camp, and he moved himself there, right? You know what that person is? That person's exactly. a damn punching bag. That person's a sparring partner. He went out there, and mm-hmm. they, especially if you ooh, don't start getting the better of Floyd in the round. That round, the rounds are what he wants them to be. Yeah, they're three minute rounds. But if you want to go seven, if you want to go ten, if you want to go twelve, you have to stay in there and go the rounds how he wants to go. He can play, he can talk. It's whatever he wants to do. And he, man, he'll hurt you. Not like not just with power, just with you so fatigued you can't even hold your hands up. You yeah. missed so many times, you forgot the basic techniques and fundamentals that you learned by your coach. And Connor has never been the nail. You know what I mean? Yeah. We seen the first time he faced adversity when he got hit with a little shot and got the, the red naked choke put on him. He's never been the nail. He's always been the hammer. He's always fought guys that were um, lesser strikers than him. This is going to be a true test. Let's see if his, yeah. his actions and his mouth add up. I think he gets embarrassed, man. I think Floyd comes out and for a round or two, doesn't throw a lot of punches, just establishes his, def- his defense to let Conor know that he can't touch him. And then I think once he starts touching uh, Connor, Connor starts lunging in with that left hand. I think he gets lit up like a Christmas. And you know tree. the funny part? It don't even matter. We don't care. We yeah, want to be entertained. Yeah, I don't, don't care, care what the undercard is. Man, give nope. me Connor and Floyd, and I will pay eighty dollars to watch one fight. I know. And I, I'm not the only one that's willing to do that. So we're break fans and listeners of the Morning Wood Show. We're breaking on a fight, just being real, because obviously you know my man Dean's MMAScoutingReport.com. He will break you down to a molecule, and I'm on the Fox desk, so I have to do this for a living to make sure that I'm giving everybody an unbiased, you know, fine tooth comb. We're breaking it down from that. But the fact about watching the fight and people are going to visit the fight and buying a pay per view for the fight, you will do it. I will do it. Because it's a moment in time you can't just say, okay, I remember when. You either have to have seen it, have some record or knowledge of it, or have been there. Now, um, Tyra, I've read something today that you said that uh, Connor – and you can correct me if I'm wrong here. But you said Connor should box after this? No, what I said was I hate, I hate the internet. Yeah. You people just don't even do no <laughs> research no more. Ain't nobody reading no newspaper. If something on the internet become the law, Wikipedia is a law. Like, people don't do no testing for themselves. So I appreciate you, Dean, for asking me directly. What I said was, I think that after Conor McGregor fights Floyd Mayweather, it depends on the result. If he fights Floyd Mayweather and he wins, I believe there either either is going to be a rematch where he's now, now I'm the A-team. You get, you know, this amount of money. I get that amount of money. I think that'll happen. Or, you know, if, if he loses, I think he could potentially come back and fight in the MMA. But tell me what fight is going to entice him. What fight's going to be that magnitude after you came off fighting Floyd Mayweather? And he's not going to be hurting for money. So no. it's going to come down to a motivation thing. Is a Nick D Nick um, not Nick Nate Diaz trilogy? Is that the next fight? You fought the dude twice. You went up and fought and won the belt. You went to go fight Floyd Mayweather. Now you're going to come back and complete a trilogy? Like, really? Like, you're going to no, fight no, there's no way for a, a very dangerous opponent for yourself? You're going to fight Tony Ferguson or uh, Habib? Where they, you know, they're not going to partner with you on selling the fight? I mean, the only fight that I think makes sense is George St. Pierre. And we all know George St. Pierre, he playing everybody. I don't think he, I don't think a bone in his body want to fight. So <laughs> ain't that my, the truth? <laughs> yeah, my gut says that he's going to go out here in victory. He's going to fucking maybe rematch or he's going to maybe maybe somebody else want to fight him. Maybe Errol Spencer, maybe freaking Canelo, maybe um, Gamir Khan, maybe Adrian Broner. Somebody's going to start barking again. And if they bark and they start going 50 million plus, what person in their right mind wouldn't take up on that? You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I honestly I do see uh potential in boxing for him. If he wins, I see him riding away. You know what I'm saying? There's if no way. If he makes it twelve <laughs> rounds and wins yeah. three or four rounds, in my mind, that's a victory. That's a victory. Absolutely. It, it's guys that are, that have been in this sport their whole life that haven't been able to do that. Yeah, you know absolutely. Mean? Canelo, how many rounds did he even win four rounds? Yeah, I don't. I don't, even, I don't, I don't remember. He won four rounds. He might not. Even he might have won. won two or three rounds. If he yeah. goes in there, wins four rounds, and makes it twelve, and looks fucking anywhere near that he's on that level or can survive or the mental toughness, he's going to get a public hats off from me and many, many other fans um, across the world. Oh, yeah, I will take my hat off to him. But I see, I can see him, you know, taking this fight. And if he loses and and does at least, he don't even have to win rounds, but a a respectable job, I could see him coming back and fighting like Amir Khan or Adrian Brown or somebody. Yeah, I could see him coming back to fight Amir Khan. And think about the purse difference. Like he he was quote unquote, you know, off the record, unofficially maybe slated to fight George St. Pierre for tens of millions. Ten, fifteen million each big payday. Biggest payday we've had, would have ever seen. You know, it's it was it's reported that he made three point five million to show against Eddie Alvarez. We all know he probably made more. So you're talking about um, you know, middle millions to the you know, tens of millions. Now we're talking about the upper tens of millions, 50, 60, 70, 80, maybe a hundred million. Once you do the pay-per-view merchandising and his little pieces or whatever, think about the endorsements alone, watch companies, car companies, fine, um, fashion companies. Everybody's going to come out the work. I couldn't see him leaving with less than $10 million in endorsements for this fight alone. Man, that's so crazy, man. When you think about it, like, <laughs> they, like this sport has come to that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This sport has come to the point where there's an MMA guy, a poor MMA kid from Ireland, now in a position to fight. You know, the one of the best boxers of all time, and he's going to probably make ten million dollars in endorsements. Endorsements. Alone. This is so crazy. To this is what I'm saying about like his self belief because like he. In a sense, kind of willed him himself into this. Man, position. you got to give him credit, man. Like, yeah. hey, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be straight up. I'm, I can be real. I can tell you exactly what I think when I think, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Conor McGregor is a boss. I'm yeah, gonna be man. dead ass. He is a boss for what he's done. The the ability to go and shake the industry that fast in seven years. Seven years is all he's been in the UFC mm-hmm. for. And I could be wrong. It could be less. TJ, you can maybe help us out on that. But he has came into this industry. He has shooken it up to a point where you crack the top of that soda. It's, it's soda on everybody. He's done that. Now he's made himself so popular that Floyd Mayweather came out of retirement to fight this dude. Like, come on now. You got you yeah. to get credit. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he, I mean, he just willed himself into this position. Yeah. Like said, I'm going to do it. And obviously he put, you know, he he did what he had to do as far as action wise, like knocking guys out and, you know, building his fan base and doing what he had to do. But it's just amazing how he could go. And, from- it, and it didn't start last week. It didn't start no. when he got to the UFC. You got to realize Conor McGregor. I don't even know this, this, this kid. I always call everybody a kid, but I, I don't even know Conor McGregor. But just looking at the results, I guarantee you, he stood in front of the mirror. He's planned this out. He scripted what he was going to say when he got to this point. He envisioned himself being a multiple division champion. He spoke these things into existence. You know, spiritually, they said, you speak those things that are that 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 are not as if they are so, or it's a power in the tongue. You know, it's life and death in it. You know, and some people say, hey, speak those things into the universe. Whatever you believe in, this kid's done that. There's no way he could achieve what he's done. There's no way that he can, quote unquote, predict or put himself in these killer win-win situations time and time again. You know, he just got picked up by Beats. He was a monster energy drink athlete. Um, He was on a freaking Call of Duty as a character. All these things are coming to this kid because... Mentally, as you said, the self-belief and just willing himself into a position of success. Conor McGregor's first amateur fight was 10 years ago. When was his first fight in the UFC? Uh, 2011, I believe. So it was perfect. Less than seven years. Six years. So who did he fight? That was against Marcus Brimage, right? Marcus Brimage. Uh, oh, my apologies. Sorry. Uh, Conor McGregor's first UFC fight, 2013. 2013. Four years so in I, UFC. I stand corrected. 
as a professional fighter probably 2011. UFC, he's been our 2013. We're in 2004, 17. Four years later from his debut in the UFC, this kid has every person that watches anybody punching somebody in the face. They're talking about Connor. You can't mention boxing without Connor. You can't mention MMA without Connor. That's that's what's going on right to, now. To to really put it into perspective, four years ago the man was on welfare. That's what, and that's what I'm saying. Like apparently, rumor has it that when hey he Connor, we squashed our beef right now, man. That's all I had to hear. <laughs> we we, we yeah. ain't got no more beef. Yeah, all the fans I heard that Phillips. listen to the show tweet it out. Me and Connor, we squashed. We ain't got no beef. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's what I heard when he fought Marcus Brimage. He was on welfare. It, it, I mean, this is this is crazy, man. To to go from that and to just he might you know, get a tweet himself. Me. He might get a what? He might get a tweet for me today. Yeah, man, he's he's definitely done well. Yeah, and like he's he's, the ambassador of Quan right now. He, yeah, he's definitely he's done that right now. Yeah, he did his thing, man. So real quick before we take a break, um, predictions. I know it's, it's tough to say, but what are, predictions? What do you predict happens in that fight? Um, I. I I got to, you know, just with everything that's going into this, man, I got to think Conor McGregor can, can can make it six rounds. I just think after those six rounds, um, one person going going to go into a fight or flight mode, one person going to go on autopilot because they've been there so many times. Uh, we know that Conor is probably going to be the fight or flight guy. I just don't know how he's going to deal with that adversity. The first time he's seen that adversity um, in my mind was Nate Diaz. He saw a little bit in Chad Mendez. But then Chad Mendez started to fade on him. And outside of those two fights, like, have we really seen Conor McGregor um, see any adversity in the fight? Um, so I think Floyd Mayweather wins. Um, I don't think he has ability right now. I think Conor has a really hard chin. I think he's going to be at least skilled enough to make it six rounds. But I think after that, it's either going to be a complete takeover where Floyd takes the last six or he finds a way to stop Conor. Hey, I got yeah. a question for you, uh, Tyron. When yeah. when you're in the gym and you're maybe doing just stand up sparring or whatever, uh, you ever get tagged? Maybe get a little bit loopy. Do you have to fight the urge to take someone down or get crazy? Because Never. Uh, honestly, like if if you take the L. if 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 Connor gets tagged and gets loopy, what are the odds that he accidentally throws like a high kick or something? Because let me tell you this, okay, Connor McGregor. Now, I gave him a lot of praise, but now I got to give him the real honesty. Conor McGregor ain't been in a boxing gym like me. He hasn't went years and years of taking their lumps in wildcard boxing, sparring world champion guys where they're beating your ass and you want it out the round. Your coach pour water on your head. Then you've seen him do that before. Mm -hmm. Nope, yeah. get back in there. Nope, you got to go back in there. He hasn't had that. Everybody worships him. Everybody tells him how great he is. He's sparring people that's going to make him look good. He's never been in that world. Michael Bisping. Michael Bisping was in wildcard boxing sparring. Latif Coyote. And after he complained so much about people wrestling him, he went in for a double leg inside the boxing ring. It's a confirmed fact, verified blue check. So what I'm saying is comparable to me and maybe a Jorge Masvidal or maybe somebody else that's been in a real-ass boxing gym that's taken some real lumps and didn't quit and kept coming back, it's no comparison. So I'm never going to resort to that. I've been in there. I know how to box. I know how to take my lumps, and I also recognize if these guys got on the wrestling mat with me, they probably wouldn't stand a chance. If they got on a jiu-jitsu match with me, they wouldn't stand a chance. And the reason I'm in there is because I want to fight and spar with somebody better than me so I can raise my level up, not to go out there and just tune somebody up. I can do that in the MMA gym. Do you think uh, – So, I, and TJ, I know where you're going with this, and a part of me thinks that this could happen too. A part of me thinks that Connor gets so frustrated that he just he – He's going to overly so clinch. Much. Yeah, he's going to clinch round, up. Round clinch 6 through 12, if he makes it, we're going to see him clinch a lot, I guarantee you. Yeah. When you miss a lot and you don't have no answer, you just want to get that person close to you because they're doing too much. You want to calm them down, and you want to stop the, the rain from pouring down. You want to put so, the umbrella up. So my prediction is this. I think that, um, like I said, I think Floyd takes the first two rounds to just show his defensive dominance and not allow Connor to hit him and just frustrate him terribly and get him to start reaching and making mistakes, then I think he stops him within the next three rounds after that. I think he stops him. I think he just he hits him so much that the ref is just like, all right, man, all right, kid, you've had enough. I don't know if he'll go down fully like and be knocked out, but I think he'll drop him once or twice, and then the ref will just be like, hey, man, you're, you're taking too much punishment. I have to stop.